Hey everyone, it's been a few days since this, uh, this promo code thing made its way through the news cycle. And there are specific reasons why we put out a short statement on our website and have said little else about it. Okay, so it may have been frustrating, I understand that, frustrating for our supporters to watch the news and, and to hear very little from us, but I have to work this problem in the way that it needs to be worked. I guess I'll say it like that. So now's the time that it's appropriate to talk about it. So one of the most valid reasons I think can, why Canadians are sick to death of the mainstream media and the political class in Canada is that they're almost entirely untrustworthy and wildly manipulative, almost to a psychopathic level. And it is beyond unsettling. So as in our case in the promo code controversy, the pattern is to pick out a moment in time attach a fictitious, attach fictitious information to something that's actually true and then roll it out in a coordinated fashion to provoke the strongest possible emotional reaction. To do this effectively, obviously you need to eliminate any context or historical content or contrary view or whatever. And I will tell you this works. It works exceedingly well, especially on weak-minded people, no matter where they land on the political spectrum. Our situation is a case study in this. Anyway, Let's sort it out. So none of this back and forth with the group Poly Says Who Vient is new. Okay, we've been going back and forth, slinging insults at each other for five years. It didn't start that way for us, certainly not for me, but that's where it ended up eventually to be entirely fair. So this relationship exists on Twitter. The name of their account is at Poly Says Who Vient, or Poly for short. Our account is called CCFR underscore CCDAF or CCFR for short. And as you can see, this is how we both exchange messages. And to be fair, both parties could tone it down a bit or maybe even a lot. Polly for relentlessly asserting that licensed gun owners are akin to mass shooters, and licensed gun owners, including women, should be looked upon as a lesser class. And the CCFR for pointing out the repulsiveness of that and the inappropriate use of their status as a victim's group as a shield behind which to hurl abuse at us and gun owners as a community. And again, to be perfectly fair, both sides have had some significant low points. One of Polly's favorite tactics is to drive a wedge between the CCFR and our members by implying that we're some kind of illegitimate organization fooling people into giving us money. And as you can see, this is a high mileage approach for this group. Polly scans our accounts several times a day, or at least it seems like that. And so on November 20th, our official account tweeted out that we have some reusable shopping bags or something like that that our members can buy if they want to. Polly immediately grabbed that message and they retweeted it with their comment. The CCFR doing what the CCFR does best. I'm not sure how that benefited them, but they did it. And in the usual tit-for-tat fashion, over the last five years, I, I'll mention again, we generated a promo code Polly for 10% off our online store. Polly is the name of their account. If their account was called at Walmart Chopper, the promo code would have been Walmart. And that's it. That's the end of the actual story. That's it, that's the real story. The Polly account had been responding to the name Polly for five years. The promo code ran for four days until November the 24th, and then it was gone. It was replaced by our Black Friday sale. Well, that's the end of the actual story. That's not the end of this story. So fast forward two weeks later, Marco Menachino, who's the Liberal Minister for Public Safety, tweets out this story from Le Devoir from December the 2nd. He tweeted that out on the 3rd but the story was from the second. But at exactly the same time, the Canadian press comes out with this story, with the headline, Polytechnic Mass Shooting Survivor Slams Gun Rights Group for Using Poly Promo Code. And the story links the promo code from November the 20th with the anniversary of the shooting on December 6th. That's clearly not true, but it gets worse. Marco Menachino on December the 5th, which is actually the eve of the anniversary, is in the House of Commons for question period. And he's debating with the Conservatives and clearly doesn't want to debate their ideas, but he wants to discredit them instead. So he stands up and he says this. Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, with great 
respect for my colleague, the intent of the government has always been clear. We are not targeting law-abiding gun owners or hunters. We are targeting the AR-15 style guns which have been used in some of the worst shooting tragedies in this country's history, including, including politics. But recently, the Conservatives' friends at the Coalition for Firearms Rights exploited the worst femicide in Canadian history for profit. This was a slap in the face to all of the families of the victims and the survivors of Polytechnique. And I'm wondering, will the Conservatives stand up now, condemn the CCF CCFR, and ask them to apologize? The Honourable Member for Fundy including politic. But recently, the Conservatives' friends at the Coalition for Firearms Rights exploited the worst femicide in Canadian history for profit. This was a slap in the face to all of the families of the victims and the survivors of Polytechnique. And I'm wondering, will the Conservatives stand up now, condemn the CCF CCFR and ask them to apologize. The Honourable Member for Fundy Royal... Well, as it turns out, numerous media appearances were set up in advance and the messaging further departs from the truth. He, he ups the ante. Check these statements out. So I'm going to talk about communications, but I do want to round out my last answer, which is that our goal here, our intent all along, has been to target AR-15 style guns and obviously not to go after uh, hunters or to use uh, to target any kinds of guns that are commonly used for hunting. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of the reason why we're seeing so much confusion and fear is that there is a flooding of the zone of disinformation by some of the special interests, including uh, the Canadian uh, Center or Canadian Coalition for Firearms Rights, who not only uh, is suggesting that we're, you know, precisely targeting uh, gun owners, which is absolutely false, but is uh, equally uh, taking the opportunity to exploit uh, the worst femicide in this country's history uh, for profit. Uh, by using a, a poly uh, promotional code to, to, to ramp up sales for its merchandise. And earlier today, I called on all members of the chamber to condemn the CCFR and to ask them to apologize to the victims and the survivors of the uh, of, of the Polytechnic uh, Institute shooting tragedy with whom we're going to be tomorrow. So which is important, but equally it is important, important is, is clearing it's up very which important. guns will and won't be. And why aren't and you being clear and about that's that? Why the, and that's why the well, we have been clear about that, and we are clear in a number of ways. I, I have said to them, and I've said, frankly, to the other opposition parties, that we will work with them. But here's what doesn't help. What doesn't help is when you have some special interest gun lobbyists like the Canadian Coalition for Firearms Rights going out there and exploiting the worst femicide in this country's history for profit. And I've called on the Conservative Party of Canada today to demand that the CCFR apologize and take down that promotional code referencing Polytechnique, which is just an absolute slap in the face of those victims. All that has done is it has been a, a tremendous insult and re-traumatizing re to those victims uh, and to those survivors on the eve of the 33rd anniversary of this tragedy, while at the same time short-circuiting debate. Mm -hmm. And we embrace debate. We know this is an emotional issue. But if we are thoughtful and principled and if we root our debate in facts, then we can get there. Okay. So contrary to the minister's defamatory claims, there was no connection to the anniversary of the shooting. There was no promo code to take down. It was gone on November the 24th. There was no exploitation of the largest mass femicide in Canadian history. It's an advocacy group punching back against a Twitter account named Polly for its online abuse of the people it represents. That was it. And if there was a problem referring to the group as Polly, it would have been an issue at some point over the previous five years or at least when this exchange happened back in the middle of November. So I'll tell you, this was the first time that we saw a massive like, coordinated campaign against us like this. And <laughs> it was really uncomfortable. And I think it was uncomfortable for, for a lot of our members too. It, it was. And honestly, we did get a lot of concerned messages and some of them from our members. But overall, I think most people recognize this for what it actually was. Now, some of our own people were so taken with this campaign, and how would you blame them, that they wanted us to apologize. When the liberals use the resources of the federal government and the power of the mainstream media in Canada to launch a spin campaign, like a smear campaign upon you, it can influence your per perception of reality, what's real and what isn't. It's still pretty powerful, right, despite what we might think. In reality, those people wanted us to apologize for what the liberals and the media said we did, 
not for what we actually did. So there's no apology coming from the CCFR. If we can't maintain our grip on reality in the face of a coordinated attack like this, we're all lost. Either something is true or it's not. There's no, really no in between. So I'll, I'll add this before I wrap it up. The media, the liberals, Pauli Sessouvien, have all made it clear that it's morally reprehensible to bicker during the anniversary of the unimaginable tragedy on December 6, 1989, and I agree unconditionally. But yet here's Polly on December 6th, still finding the time and the gall to fling criticism at Carey Price for some reason, to keep the conflict and the story going. We haven't mentioned Polly for a few days for obvious reasons, yet here they are still slinging it against the CCFR. And look, they're even referring to us as the CCFR. They're using our name. But wait, they're so focused on keeping the story alive, literally defaming us, that they posted a fake tweet to keep it going. I made a tweet similar to this on November the 21st after the promo code went live. I deleted it when this blew up because some people were offended. Maybe I'm not as insensitive as some people might think. So I saw this last night. It's clearly fake. And look at the date. It's December the 3rd. And Polly says, I posted it four days after the story broke. The story basically broke on December the 3rd. Anyway, I told them to take it down because the one thing I can't abide in this debate or any other are lies. And it's still up there. Anyway, there's your group, I guess. To wrap it up, the CCFR has been angering the liberals and the anti-gun groups for a long time, okay? We've been mobilizing people on our television show with our podcasts, handing out a quarter million brochures in the last election, right, in liberal writings. We've been launching lawsuits and newspaper ads and, and uh, holding press conferences on Parliament Hill, right, right on their doorstep. We've been doing a lot of media too, right, looking like rational, reasonable, reasonable people, like who gun owners are, not gun-toting lunatics. And I'll tell you, they hate that, okay? We've been testifying in committees you know, you know that last committee appearance that I made? I sat through this ridiculous diatribe from this liberal backbencher for everyone to see, of course, too, right? Um, and what was it about? Mean tweets, of course. And all he got from me was a little bit of my voice wavering at the end of a response. You know, that, that makes them angry. And then for the rest of the meeting, all they saw was a calm, rational, respectful firearms expert giving them honest questions, honest answers to their questions. And that drives them insane. So they finally had enough of the CCFR. They saw an opportunity. They turned it into something it wasn't. And they ran with it. And the media ran with it too. It was very coordinated. So I'll tell you this. Our membership fluctuates between around 28,000 to 35, 36,000 members, depending on when you pull that report out, right? Because of renewal cycles. And we have an additional, I don't know, 40, 50,000 donors who aren't members. So far, we've had three people call up and cancel their membership. And you know what? That's disappointing. And I understand because the government and the media, they can put a lot of pressure on little people like us. It's a fact. But I will tell you this. If the intent was to shut down the CCFR or shut it up, neither of those things is going to happen anytime soon. I've gotten some new, new perspective out of all this. And you know, a half-empty glass is always half full, always. So I've made my decision. I'm not driving away from this fight. I'm turning around and driving straight at it. And I hope you are all on board with me. You know, think about why they did this. Why is Pauly trying to keep this story alive? The liberals narrative, narrative is it's crumbling. The NDP are getting shaky. These rural MPs, right? Liberal and, and NDP MPs, they're all trying to save their own political careers. They're panicking. So I will say this. If there were ever a time to give in or give up, it's not now. Okay? Thanks for listening.